Hi, Tile from Inner Fidelity here. I get to hang out with Shankar today at the Odyssey headquarters. How are you doing, Shankar? Hey, I'm good, good. I'm good. Good. We're here to talk about their new Mobius headphone, which is a, a pretty cool piece of gear that I just got some demos on. And uh, I thought I'd let Shankar tell us about it. So tell us about the headphone first, the basic, okay. what it does, what the features so are, so it's on. A, it's a full planar headphone, close back mm -hmm. headphone. Um, it actually it has USB-C for both audio and charging, uh, analog and Bluetooth. Uh -huh. So it basically um, covers all the connection options. And then on top of it, it actually has a gyroscope and accelerometer, and it does um, full room emulation, head tracking, and uh, 3D positioning. Right. Um, in addition to it, you can use it with plugins and stuff for professional use as well. Right. So it's a headphone that does quite a bit. Uh, variety of things and it has a, a microphone too yes, that it has a it has a microphone somewhere around here there's a microphone that here we go uh, not that one yeah, but it's oh. basically um, it's a 3.5 mm microphone will go right like that yeah. goes in there um, so what 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 uh, in, w what was the genesis? Why did you decide to embark on this project with this headphone? Yeah, initially we started designing it for a big studio here. Uh, they wanted a headphone. They have been using our headphones for um, uh, some of the 5.1, 7.1 uh, mixing and um, delivery. And they wanted something where they can also use it uh, with um, head tracking and other things. So we started off it as a pilot project with about 45 headphones doing this uh, project there and then it slowly evolved into uh, Mobius. Uh, in the meantime then we realized it's um, there were a lot of other things that we were working on like the um, Bluetooth and st uh, Bluetooth and USB-C so we decided to put everything into one headphone because it's you know we are still a small company so it's easy for us to make one and for inventory management and stuff so that's why you see almost everything that we could think of is in this <laughs> A lot of bells and whistles, and it, it, it brings up the issue of convergence. There's a lot of, yep. of convergence of technologies, file format types, you know, uh, uh, recorded material types. How, how did you manage to bring all of these under one umbrella? Yeah, so, so uh, two things. One is the market forces, right? Um, because now it's easier to do some of these things. Earlier, uh, we were, you know, we wanted to do uh, lightning and uh, Bluetooth at the same time but it was not easy to find a chipset that could do both but now things are becoming in the semiconductor industry things are come converging as well so this is probably one of the first headsets to basically use um, many of the new chipsets like for example the 3D DSP chipset we are probably the only ones at the moment in the market same thing with the gyroscope and accelerometer chipset so uh, all these things are coming together so we can you know we don't have to have a choice do we need a wired headphone or a wireless headphone we could have one headphone and depending upon uh, what the user wants you can use it for wired and wireless or even simultaneously so let's say you are actually connected on this playing a game and you get a phone call from your phone you can switch between them seamlessly oh really yeah that's i have not seen that on a headphone at all yeah so yeah. i mean i think the other um yeah and it's the same with analog as well so yeah. And and uh, where do you think is is the first? Uh, uh, well, tell us about uh, gaming. It, it appears is is the first place where this may be uh, a, a significant uh, yeah, impact. So, so basically, uh, if you look at it, uh, the reason um, we did one, you know, that there is uh, the head tracking, for example, is not very gimmicky. There is re the reason we use head tracking is because it's better to better for front back confusion removal and that you know. Things like that. So, um, we were as we started developing this, we uh, realized that gaming is uh, you know a lot of our employees game and uh, you know to play games, and so this was a you know fit that came in nicely. Yeah. So the first uh, of the Mobius versions, we decided to make sure that all the requirements of the gaming community are met. So, for example, it's flexible. Um, it's like you know the microphone, the boom microphone works. The ear pads are uh, easily field replaceable. Uh, these are contoured, so you can wear it for a long time without comfort. And it's very light. This is probably the lightest uh, headphone we have made. Lightest Odyssey yeah, headphone for sure. Headphones, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you can wear it for a while. Um, so so uh, microphone mute, microphone volume control. So 
we wanted to make sure that genuinely addresses the user requirements for that market as well. So gaming was the first one, but uh, watching movies, uh, there's a lot of 5.1 and 7.1 content. This would this is very um, um, impressive for uh, watching movies and binge watching and other things as well. So certainly a, a consumer headphone in that it's a headset and you can watch movies on your laptop and or, or, or tablet or yeah. and and did you find that the head tracking is useful when you're uh, using an iPad or an iPhone mm -hmm. to watch music? Yeah, yeah. So the head tracking can work on independent of what input it is. So it's whether it's analog, Bluetooth, or uh, USB, the head tracking works. So even uh, when you watch like on a phone, for example, on a Pixel 2 phone or something with USB-C, it becomes very immersive because after a few minutes, your brain forgets that head tracking is on and then it becomes very, very immersive. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and, and you mentioned professional applications. Um, what are the professional applications uh, for, for this type of headphone? Yeah. So, so this headphone... Um, Actually, you know, because of the 5.1 and 7.1, you can generally use it with Pro Tools or Logic or any of those things for multi-channel mixing. But the other thing that we have implemented that is super, uh, uh, very different from almost anything else is we can take uh, the head tracking information, feed it to plugins on the system to do ambisonics. Um, or um, we can take, for example, in a sound field, we can take mono or stereo or 5.1 bring them into the ambisonic sound field, animate them, and then um, you can immediately get real-time feedback on how it sounds as you animate the sounds with head tracking on. And this basically uh, removes a big pain point for the VR and AR mixing because right now there is no easy workflow uh, to do those things with the existing tool sets like uh, inside Pro Tools and stuff. So this would basically, the same headphone, you know, it's not a, any different headphone. It's the same headphone, you can just turn off and turn on these features and uh, use them for professional uh, mixing and uh, uh, VR content creation. And so, and so is there a, 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 you're a very imaginative guy. <laughs> is there a pretty long list of, of things you'd like to do with this in the future? Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of applications you can, you know, you can see, uh, uh, with uh, some of the things that, for example, there's a gyroscope and accelerometer here. Your phone has a gyroscope and accelerometer. One of the coolest features we have implemented is uh, this. This has is the auto uh, tracking. So, for example, when you are watching a movie on a tablet, it's easy to say this is the center channel, right? But let's say I'm watching the movie on a train and the train turns. We need to basically, you don't want to be calibrating the center channel all the time. So one of the things that we can do is we can automatically figure out where the train is turning and where it is going, you know, it's a head movement and this headphone can automatically calibrate, uh -huh. right? So, but you can also see, okay, the tablet also has a gyroscope and an accelerometer. You now there's a lot of other applications for 3D audio, you know, mm -hmm. uh, voice over IP, for example. Um, where you can have people positioning in a position in a conference call or something like that. There is a lot of other applications. So this is we think of uh, Mobius as a platform, right? So this is our first um, attempt at making mm -hmm. a 3D uh, headphone, and we think this is um, um, you know the the feature set on this is. Uh, way above almost anything else in the market at the moment. Mm. But there's a lot of other open areas that we could take this into in future. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously, this is a, a virtual reality and augmented reality is obviously something that's that's coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's pretty ambitious to see, as you say, you're a small company compared to the rest of the world. You're a big company for a headphone company and where you've come from. But, but uh, I wonder uh, how 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 much and where do you see competition coming in in the future? You know who who is capable of doing these types of things and doing them well? I think this besides you, because obviously but he he mentioned something a moment ago, which I'll inter interrupt my own question. 
he, uh, VOIP, and he showed me a demo where um, the the voice uh, the voices were coming from different places, so they were spatially separated in your head. And what it did was give much better speech intelligibility. It allowed it essentially allowed your brain to use its built-in cocktail effect mm -hmm. to separate the the voices. It became much more intelligible. So obviously. For teleconferencing and so on and so forth, it's 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 good. So there's there's going to be a lot of competition, and also the the convergence part. It's very difficult to converge all these standards and and so on and so forth. So I'm wondering, who do you see playing in this space soon? I think there will be a lot of people. You know, uh, you can see um, Sennheiser has all their ambio stuff, which is very good. Uh, they have the binaural microphones to. Um, they have this new 9.1 uh, mm -hmm. channel format or something. They have the microphones. You, you know, uh, for, I, you know, we have other people trying to copy our headphones. It's not very um, uh, big secret. <laughs> so, uh, so, and so, so, but, but, I, but the thing is, I think it will be harder to copy almost all the features of this. They might do one or two. You know, this particular headphone, we think eventually people will copy some features, but, um, but we have other ideas and we will probably work faster. Um, we can't worry too much about people copying stuff. And uh, well, I'm not. I'm not saying copying as much as I'm saying that these are things that are bound to come, and yeah. different companies will approach it differently because of the the difficulty of convergence. Um, obviously, Apple is a company that will will dive into this. You won't probably. We probably won't know much about it until they actually appear with something. But they're almost certainly working. So I, I misunderstood the question. But yeah. uh, from from you know, I see a lot of companies working in three D audio. Right? Do you have different ways of approaching it? Um, uh, there is companies from uh, the gaming companies themselves. There's a lot of three D audio work that's yeah. going on. That in 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 terms of mainstream uh, companies. Uh, there is also a ton of research going on into 3D features. Right. Even the Qualcomm's next generation Snapdragon chipset actually has some of these things uh, built in. Mm. So I, I think there's a lot of features. I mean, some some of them might be um, a little bit more gimmicky than others, but they will all, there is bound to be a um, push in this direction in future. So we're likely to see products appearing more regularly at, or at, as the chipsets develop it's, it, really it's chipsets it's also the standards right, uh, right. It's, it's the, there's one um, the content the chipset uh, and the uh, and the um, uh, standards to transport them for example today there is no easy way to get uh, object based audio into a headphone you know you have to use some proprietary mechanism but mpeg h is coming right there might be other um, m package mpeg uh, mpeg mpeg oh, is coming um, they, you know, in an MPEG hits file, you can have uh, ambisonics, you can have positional audio, you can have channel-based audio, and mix all three. Um, that is, um, from a content perspective, there's a lot more content being created in 3D because of games and uh, movies and uh, even ambisonics for uh, VR. So, uh, as the content develops, the uh, file formats develop, I think it'll be easier for us to actually uh, make much more uh, compelling immersive applications. So, it, it so it, it's kind of an interesting thing that we'll see. It's it's not the headphone manufacturers themselves that are pacing it, but it's it's sort of the 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 whole of the industry, the, the as you said, the ecosystem of the industry figuring out. Oh, okay. Well, we need to make this transportable. We need to make that. We need to make a standard out of this, and and um, so that's going to be one of the the, the biggest. Correct. It's going to be paced by the by the ecosystem as a whole. Then. Yeah, the, the eco, you know, it's the the companies that make the content. They have to actually have a market to make the three D audio, yeah. right? Um, but also, there's other applications. For example, Microsoft recently released an app on even iPhones, for example, that have that use positional cues in audio to show, um, you know, for blind people. Right. So you can actually walk down a street and it actually calls out what is on your right, what is on your left. Right. Um, and even Bose uh, so showed something at uh, South Bay Southwest where they had a, a positional audio example. You can look at something with their um, the glasses and it actually tells you what the restaurant is and things mm. like that. So those are more argument uh, uh, um, AR applications, uh, augmented reality applications for audio. But in terms of content, I think also more uh, usage as well, you know, because a lot of people 
um, watch uh, movies on tablets now, Netflix and uh, Netflix streams many things in 5.1 as well. So there is a lot of options to get content. It's it's funny that the uh, what we're really seeing is this this sea of ever changing technologies um, being magnified and solidified by people's imagination, and uh, and th that those things are like stepping stones for hey, what's the next thing? Or oh my gosh, I should do such and such a thing. Um, do you do you enjoy being in this? Uh... Yeah, it's a lot of fun, right? I mean, this headphone is probably the most fun we have had um, creating. You know, it's a very different uh, headphone. A um, lot of new technologies, uh, pulling all these things together um, and utilizing. You know, and also the the other thing in all this technology thing that we, uh, you know, it, it's also the it's all built on the planar headphone. Yeah. Right. And and this it actually matters because we can really create. You know, three D. Uh, is much more immersive when you have really accurate sound positioning and right. very, you know, the impulse response is very good. So uh, I think there is, um, I mean, with all the things coming out, it's, um, you know, much more fun to do these things yeah. than uh, redoing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, I, I, Shankar is going to get me one of these in the not too distant future before a production unit because I want to spend a little time. My demo here this morning was very, very interesting, and um, it's um, it's going to be fascinating to see this headphone have an effect on the marketplace. So it'll, it'll, it'll also be interesting for us to see. Yeah, <laughs> there's no, there's nothing like this. In yeah. The market, yeah, where is it going to go? Who who's going to snap up on it and Will audio files accept it? And yeah, yeah. Awesome. I mean, it, it actually you can turn off all the three D features. It yeah. becomes a standard Odyssey yeah. close back headphone at yeah. that point. Yeah, and right? it it sounded it sounded good. You know, it sounded yeah. It's, fine. A, it's a standard close back headphone at yeah. that point, and then you know all these features are add ons. Um, yeah, that you can you get. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much, Thank Shankar. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Tyler. All right, and uh, we'll talk about this more soon. So we'll see you next time.